Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna talk about how to communicate as a software developer. And I know what you might be thinking, what the heck does this have to do with engineering? But the truth is that communication is one of the things that separates senior engineers from everybody else. And if you can do this well, it will really set you apart. It's easy to think that being a developer is just about writing code alone in a dark room, but the truth is that most software development is done on teams. And because it's done on teams, communicating within your team Team is of the utmost importance. All right, so I'm going to talk about three things, proactive communication, constructive communication, and asynchronous versus live communication. So let's go ahead and get into it. So proactive communication is pretty much what it sounds like. And for me, proactive communication comes down to setting expectations within your team. For me, proactive communication can encompass a lot of things. So it can encompass logistics. So saying stuff like, hey, everyone, I'm gonna be away from my computer for an hour, all the way up to things related to the code. So for example, hey devs, everyone needs to run migrations or watch out for this bug and this part of the application, but I'm fixing it, stuff like that. Proactive communication can also be clarifying things before you start on work. So let's say you take a ticket from the backlog and as you're starting work on it, you have some questions or you need some clarification. Proactive communication would be reaching out to make sure you have everything set in your mind before you start working. Basically, proactive communication comes down to thinking ahead about things that could go wrong or challenges that might be presented to your team and trying to mitigate those. Or at least that's how I think of it. I'm generally of the school of thought that the better expectations are communicated, the better everyone works together. And that is why proactive communication is so important. All right, let's move on to constructive communication. So in my mind, constructive communication is mostly going to take place in pull requests to either GitHub or GitLab or whatever source control you happen to use. And constructive communication is important because it's a team teaching tool and it's also a really good way to level your team up if it's done appropriately and with some nuance. So developers have a bad reputation for being really blunt and not too nuanced when it comes to feedback. So stuff like this is bad, this is wrong, this is a code smell, you know, stuff like that. And so the way I like to approach constructive communication in a way that's more palatable for the other person is to ask questions. So if you notice, for example, a lot of repeating code, I would say, hey, is there a way to make this more dry? Or, hey, for this piece of data, we would typically use the context API rather than Redux. Would you mind telling me a little bit more about your thought process? Or if there's not an opportunity to ask a question directly, I might make a statement that is a little bit more passive. So for example, I might say, it seems like the way that you built this modal is in conflict with the pattern that we have in the rest of the app. And then maybe you could follow up with a question like, does that seem to be the case to you? I think the benefit of doing things this way is that you're able to get your point across and voice some concerns without being hopefully too abrasive and you also give the other person an opportunity to express their thoughts. A lot of times when I ask a question on a pull request, it's not that I'm trying to criticize indirectly, it's that I genuinely have a question and a lot of times the person who wrote the code is the person that is best able to answer that question. And a lot of times there's just stuff that I didn't think of and so it's a good way to get all on the same page. So that's basically constructive communication for me, questions and indirect statements. All right, let's talk about the last topic, which is async versus live communication and conversations. So if I'm being honest, I don't love jumping on Zooms just kind of by nature. I kind of like being a little bit in a silo and just doing my work without having to do a whole lot of talking during the day. But I will say that live communication is better for a lot of things that come up. So it's pretty obvious, but live communication, let's say via a Zoom or in person or whatever, is better for pairing. So trying to pair program with somebody async is kind of a mess. It's just really difficult. And so I will give the win to live communication as far as that goes. And if you have a company that has a strong culture of pairing, then that probably means you're gonna be on a lot of Zooms, but that's okay. I think live communication is also better for explaining complicated things that have a fair bit of nuance. So if there's something that's really complicated, it can be a little bit exhausting to have to type out a whole paragraph and then do a bunch of back and forth about whatever the topic is. Doing it live is also better for tone. So it's really hard to communicate tone through written format. And it's also better, like I said, if there just needs to be a quick back and forth, then live is probably better for just getting that out of the way. I think async communication like Slack or email is better for everything else or for people that don't like getting on calls. But I think at a certain point, you will kind of run into some friction as it pertains to, like I said, pairing and stuff like that, that is just better suited for a live conversation. Ultimately, this comes down to team culture and to some extent individuals. So I would say above all, just do what the team does unless 
there's an obvious way of doing it better. So those are my tips on how to do communication as a developer and hopefully do it a little bit better. Hope you found this helpful. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and career development. So consider subscribing. Regardless, thanks so much for watching to the end. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.